Um, Dave, what's up? How you doing? What's up, John? Doing good. Um, so today's episode is something that I'm sure a lot of people have experienced in the past and we're wondering, you know, what the hell am I supposed to do about this? Uh, it's how do you explain yourself, whether it's to a boss or a manager uh, or even a spouse? How do you explain yourself when you miss your sales targets? And what does that mean? What 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 happens next? Something, um, if you haven't experienced, you will experience sometime soon. Before we start, Dave, not to cut you off, for everyone watching, everyone listening, subscribe below. Um, check out our web our website, bigtimecloser.com. You can check out all of our podcasts, all of our blogs, and learn everything possible, anything you need to know about sales and help your sales game to the next level. Have you ever have you ever um, had a response to someone for missing your sales targets? I've so personally, I I haven't really had you know a, like a lack of performance where right. someone came to me and said you know a boss or something. But what I have had happen is that I would set very lofty expectations of myself. And so it's, you know, probably a little different than the topic, but anyways, I'll speak about it because I know it happens. Um, so yeah, I've set very lofty expectations of myself that I failed mm -hmm. to hit many times in the past. And then, you know, the people who are above me at the time, managers, whatever they would come up to me and be like, Dave, what, you know, what, what happened? You were so far, you set a really big goal. I was so excited for you to hit that goal. And, you know, you didn't come anywhere close to it. You know, what the hell happened? And um, yeah, so I've had to explain myself and I couldn't because I didn't really have a logical explanation for my goal. I just set some crazy ass goal that I was going to, you know, 10 X my sales or, or my numbers in the next, it was right. just completely unreasonable. And I couldn't really explain make my on paper. What's that? It looked amazing on paper, but it looked amazing it on paper. It, it made me, you know, excited, motivated, um, temporarily. And then, you know, like a couple of days later, as soon as I started to, you know, realize I wasn't going to hit my goal, then it was just depressing. And, mm -hmm. um, I just stayed depressed until the end of, you know, the, the goal that the month or quarter or whatever. Um, right, right, right. so yeah. So, so personally, I've dealt with that a lot where I would set really big goals and I just I couldn't explain myself. Um, so but I, now I want to kind of talk about what I would do differently in that situation. And, you know, other situations, of course, where you actually have goals that are set for you and you miss them. You know, what are you supposed to do? How do you respond to a boss when he comes up to you and says, hey, you know what 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 happened here? You know, we set a pretty reasonable expectation for you and for everyone else in the organization. You came mm -hmm. well short. What happened? Yep, um, yep. So that's my experience. Um, it's a little bit different, but uh, I'm sure it still happens. And, and, and I'll get to a solution on how you, you, will, you handle that later on. But first, I just want to address this, what I think is which is more important, which is when someone else sets your goal for you and you, and you fall short, uh, how do you respond to that? Yep, so, John, yep. your experience, I know you have a little more experience uh, on that side of things. Uh, from what you've seen, you know, what, what would you say? Um, it's, it's common. It's common what, for what you had said to go through, um, setting your own sales targets and missing that even by a wide margin. That's more common than, in my opinion, I think that's more common than having a set standard, a quota and missing that. And um, I did miss that once. I did miss that once. And it was, it was, it was new because that was the first and only time I've ever been through that. And the reason why I say it's the only time, not because I'm this great freaking salesperson, which I think I am, but um, not because of that. But um, I just, uh, I just, I just missed it. I missed it. I missed it. And me missing it was me being lazy and not working as hard as I should have been. Um, anyone could have reached that target if they just worked and did what they were supposed to do. So the way I had to explain to my sales manager um, was this. To me, it was very similar to when I was playing football. When you play football and you messed up, you just, I, I fucked up. I, I'll do it right this time, right? Excuse my language. But I took that same concept to sales. So when I did miss my targets, it's, there's no excuse. Like, I, I messed up. I fucked up. 
I didn't work. I'm not even going to say I didn't work hard enough. I just didn't get it done. There's no excuses. I will get it done the next time. I'm not going to tell you this or that or give you this fancy speech. I just I just didn't do it. And it's un inexcusable. And I will I will make up for it. Um, you know, your next your next target, for example. Does that yeah. make sense? The, yeah, I agree. The number one thing really is accountability. Um, you know, as a manager who's hired now a lot of different reps that, that work for me and work for you. Um, the number one thing that I'm looking for personally is accountability before, you know, before that, really what it, what it, you know, what it really boils down to, let's say in the manager's shoes, let's say if you're a manager watching this, um, yeah. and you're giving goals to your employees, these goals, obviously they should be attainable, number one, but you you also need to challenge your employees to to have them push and to be better than, you know, their previous goal. Uh, you, but those goals still need to be, even if it's a push and it's a stretch, it still needs to be something that, you know, you think they can reasonably attain. You can't go out there and mm -hmm. give goals that are just high in the sky and are absolutely. absolutely impossible. You know, if you can't hit those goals, you shouldn't be giving them to your, uh, exactly. your reps. Um, last but, thing you want is a demoralized culture because it's impossible to do what the standard is. Yeah. And then you're going to have people, you know, you know, hopefully you have reps if that is the case and you're running something, an organization like that. Hopefully you do have reps that are honest with you and they say, hey, these goals are literally impossible. No one's hitting them, um, whatever. Then, you know, that'd be great. Um, then that's more of a, you know, more on you than on, you know, your, your reps. Um, yep, yep. when everyone Dave, is saying the same thing. Dave, you know what's interesting? I was just thinking um, when I was with that company and I, and I missed my target. So the cool thing was this, and I'm just now realizing the structure, how, how, um, how, how, how it works so well. So you had your bare minimal standard, standard, right? Anybody can reach, a monkey can reach this one. But then you also want to keep a, a competitive atmosphere and you want people striving for, for greatness, right? Not just beating the standard and everyone plateauing. So there were um, there was a standard, then there was another level, and there were like multiple levels. The highest level was the high, and everyone wanted that because everyone's looking to see who hit what, right? So at the same time, you have your standard, you have your standard, something that everyone needs to hit, but then there's another realm of competitiveness, and you have to really highlight who hit those targets just so more people want to hit those and your company continues to grow. More sales are produced. You know what I mean? You know, I agree. That makes sense. It's, it's a, sales in general is very competitive and it should be competitive. And, uh, but that's why it gets so stressful, I guess, for people when you miss your sales targets and um, you don't know what the hell to do. So mm -hmm. number one, uh, just want to really just start getting into it now. So if you're at a job, you're the sales rep, and you miss your sales target, you're, you're told you need to make five new deals in the quarter and you're at three. Let's say you right. worked really hard, you tried your best, you were given good resources, and now you have a meeting with your boss or your manager, whoever it is, and uh, for the sit down and you're, you're shaking in your boots. So what do you do? The number one thing, again, is accountability. Like I said, you have to take responsibility for your actions. That's number one. <clears throat> and tell them the truth. I worked hard. I fell short of my goal. Uh, and number two, let them know how you're going to change and what you're going to do differently going forward to hit your goals. Exactly. That's exactly. The, the, the really the, the two things that you need to do. What you don't want to do is start making excuses, uh, saying things like, oh, no, this target um, he's been, you know, uh, the former reps in this territory have spoken to this target so many times. And I just, I, I couldn't bother them. Um, or the leads were, weren't any good this, this month. I got bad leads from, you know, our, our, our marketing team. Those things, no one wants to hear that. Even yeah, if you're, they you're become, you'll become an excuse monster. No one wants yeah. to hear you. You become yes. full of shit. Eventually. You know, like you, as a sales rep, you have to really just dig deep and understand if if other sales reps are hitting these goals, if you know that there's other reps in, in your company or organization that are hitting these goals and you fell short, unfortunately, the way that that's going to look is that these goals are achievable. You just didn't do it. So there's no other excuse. If other reps yeah. are doing it, you, yeah. there's no excuse. Um, mm -hmm. So number one, you, you need to take accountability and you need to own up to it. 
like I said, as a manager, when I had people that came up to me and owned up to it and, and told me, like I said, the two steps that I just outlined, uh, own up to it and then have a plan ready on how you're going to hit your goal. When I had reps that did that, I was fine with it. It was great. I understood. Listen, bosses know you're not going to hit your goal all the time. The bosses and, and ownership there or owners rather are striving for success. And like I said, sometimes the goals are going to be stretch goals where they know it's going to be a little hard to achieve. They've um, been in your situation before. They understand. Yeah. And, and it might be scary, but they understand that's how that, that's how they have to push their company forward by setting these stretch goals. So as a salesperson, just understand that, that it's not the end of the world. Number one, um, you know, you do not need to write an apology letter uh, to your boss handwritten, you know, I'm so sorry for missing my target. You're the best owner ever. You don't need to suck up or anything like that. You don't need to suck up. You don't need to write an apology letter. You just, it's very simple. You own up to it, explain what you're going to do differently and just get to work. And more importantly, this is the third step, which is the secret to all of this is um, follow through, obviously, that that should be a given. Follow through with what you said. You put a plan, you gave your boss a plan, put it into action. And as soon as you start seeing results, even if it's small, uh, something that is, you know, that, that your boss can monitor or see or your manager, whoever, call them or email them, whatever it is, however you guys communicate and let them know, say, look, I, I told you I was going to do this uh, to make up for last quarter. I'm already on track for this and that. Yeah, this person right, just right, signed right. a deal. I'm, this guy's or a person's ready to do a deal tomorrow. Things are going great. Let them and see the momentum building around you. Yeah, let them see that things are changing. And maybe if you're afraid that they're monitoring you, or they're, they're going to be on your back. I promise that they're going to lay off of you a little bit and they're going to be happy. They're going to completely forget that you, you know, maybe not completely, but, you know, things are going to start shifting in their in their minds about your performance. Hey, from all the people that we've trained, all you want to see is effort. Some people aren't going to be as skilled as others and some people aren't going to do as great as others. But if you see they're putting 100% effort in, and they're also coachable and they're making adjustments. You can't, you can never be mad. You want them to work with you. You'll fight yeah. for them to stay with you, even though sales are low. You yeah. I, that, I, those people around you all the time. Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. And I can vouch for that, you know, a, a million percent, 10 times over 10. If, you know, I have reps that are, maybe they missed, we had a target and they missed it for the month, but I knew they were working hard and they were coachable. They were teachable. They were willing to implement the things that I told them to do. And they did it right away. They didn't hesitate. They didn't ask questions. They just went went and did it. Uh, I would 100% fight for them. And I would 100% yep, go yep. to bat for them. And even if I had to give them the same speeches or the same meetings that I gave to other people for missing goals, it's just, you know, standard. It's just yep. standard practice. But, you know, I would anytime, 100%. Anytime that you and I miss our targets, not given by the company, but our personal targets are anytime we just, yeah, anytime we miss our targets, what would we do? We wouldn't panic. We would go right back to the basics, the very basics, right? We'll have a deep talk with each other. Won't panic, go back to the basics and make a few minor adjustments. But going back to the basics is everything to get back on track to your sales targets. And going back to the basics is like, what did you do when you first started? The, the very basics. You had a good night's sleep. You woke up early. You had a good breakfast. Maybe you worked out. Um, you had your morning routine going. You um, you came in bright and early, ready to go, and you maybe qualified for how many hours straight. You took less. You took little breaks. You um, you worked late. Uh, you listened to motivational stuff throughout the day. All of that is going back to the basics. And anytime you find yourself missing off track, anytime we find ourselves um, you know, messing up. We just went back to the basics and what happened? Everything just turned around within a couple of weeks. I agree. That's a great point. Um, because now that you bring it up, I remember every single time that I realized I was slacking. That's exactly what I did. Um, and I would just remember, like, I would ask myself, like, what, what did I used to do back then when I was just like in the zone, um, constantly getting results and I forgot that there was a lot of extra work that was, you know, put behind it. Like, like you said, sleeping early, even though I want to hang out or stay up late and play video games or whatever. 
or, or go out drinking or whatever the hell it is. I just, I didn't do any of that. I would wake up extra early. I would go to the gym consistently, even though I, I just thought it was a waste of time back. I would just force myself to yep. do these little things, to stay sharp and to stay energetic and motivated, read books, uh, sales do books. Listen to your recordings, your best recordings. That I listen you heard. to recordings all the time. I mm -hmm. practice, mm -hmm. listen to motivational videos, Tony Robbins. Do what you used to do that worked. Yeah. Whoever it is. And I would just do that. I would dedicate, you know, whatever I might, not my life, but I would dedicate a lot to getting back into that, you know, to that point. So that's another thing, you know, people that end up missing sales targets typically are people that get comfortable. And so if you've been doing something for a while, um, sales for whatever, for a while, and uh, you're in your like fourth, fifth year, and all of a sudden you start slacking, you might feel offended when your boss comes up to you and you're like, Hey, I've been doing this for, for so long. I'm, I'm an, I'm a pro I'm president's club, all that top seller. Why the hell are you targeting me? Like just lay off my back. I know what I'm doing. Give me an excuse. You, unfortunately you can't do that. Um, mm -hmm. You just need to remember that in sales. First of all, you're going to be, you're going to have targets all the time, whether it's from yourself or your manager, or whoever, no matter how, where you are in your position. Um, and that's one thing to remember when you get comfortable, you're going to forget all these little things that you used to do, uh, that you need to immediately get right back to it yep, and, it's so easy. and things will transform. How about this? This is a very important one. It would always screw with us all the time, every single year. Let's use Christmas for an example. That was always, that's always the biggest holiday. December comes, uh, January, um, the biggest holiday of the year. You think business is slow. And business at one point was never slow those times of the year. Why? Because all we did was work like animals. Like there was no such thing as a holiday. Then we actually, for some reason, believed it's Christmas time. People aren't going to pick up. No one's going to take meetings. They're busy. They're doing this. They're traveling. But um, and we noticed like a decrease during Christmas. And one time we we're like, yo, F that. No, it doesn't have to work that way. Back in back before that never affected us. So let's go right back to those basics. And then we had, I remember one December, we had like the biggest month ever. The most accounts opened. Um, everything was just great, right? But again, that was just going back to the very basics and not imagining it was a holiday. So quickly talk about the mindset you need to be in to separate yourself from people on vacation during the holidays and staying in that attack mode for work. So the way that I stay in that zone, honestly, truthfully, is every day I nowadays, uh, even though I don't do what I used to do before, I still do the same for you know what I'm doing now is I do the little things. I, I stick to the basics. And that just reminds me every day to stay sharp and to just not get, I don't want to say lazy, but get comfortable. And every day that is an opportunity. I, I, I just look at it, whether I'm making a cold call or whatever, there's an opportunity every day. Businesses are running every day. You Wake said up, that. Stay sharp and yeah. get ready for work. You said it so clear one day. You said McDonald's is running, Burger King, all these other fast food chains, all these stores. Go outside. Stores are open. You're a business. You should be open. You need to be open. Why are you going to discount yourself um, and not make money? Same exact attitude applies. And okay. once we always said that to ourselves, we just, um, nothing can stop us. So, so don't, so the point is don't use the holidays as an excuse ever, because it's not an excuse. Tax time is not an excuse for the July weekend. Well, that's the shorter holiday, but none of these are excuses. They're, they're all in the head. That's yeah, it. Like I said, at the end of the day, it, it, missing your sales target, it's not the end of the world. Take a little bit of accountability. Number two, show, you know, what steps you're going to take to improve and make next quarter, next month better. Yep. And number three, as soon as you start putting it into action, you start seeing results, let people know about it. Don't be shy about it. And that positive momentum will also help you finish out and carry through with your goals because now you have someone on your, you know, someone that you told and, and that, that sort of pressure is there to succeed. Um, right. And um, Dave, one quick thing before um, we finish up uh, for those, for people who have to um, write their boss as to why they didn't hit their targets, um, similar to what we discussed, um, no excuses. Uh, I'm going to get it right this time. And just quickly write down how you're going to do it to get it right. Like one, yeah. two, three. Write an action plan. Be specific. Like, you know, be specific. Don't be vague. I think, uh, you know, you, this is my opinion. You should be specific. Tell them, listen, I'm going to dial 100, 
you know, dials a day. I'm going to speak to the, try to speak to this many people a day. I should be getting 20 contacts with a hundred dials. I close 10% of them. That should, you know, get me my goal exactly. conservatively exactly. and m- make your boss have, or your, your manager have confidence. Once they see something like that, that's understandable and clear, it should be pretty, pretty easy uh, and yep. easy for you as well. Yep. Yep. All right. I yep. think that, that about wraps it up. Uh, time's running guys, low. Listen, everyone watching, thanks again. We'll catch you guys soon. Um, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Uh, check out our podcast, all of our podcasts. Um, read our blogs. Check out our courses that we have on bigtimecloser.com. You can learn any and everything about selling. And more importantly, take your sales game to the next level. Stay tuned for our very next episode. We're not going to tell you what it is yet. And next time I'll have more lights. Uh, fair enough. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Speak soon.